Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bitto. Welcome and muy bienvenidos to episode number one of Mexico Unexplained, where we explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm Robert Bitto. This is our inaugural episode, and I'm very excited to launch this podcast. It's been a long time coming. I've had a love affair with Mexico for almost 30 years. I've lived there twice, once as a student in Morelia, Michoacan in 1989, and the other time was in Mexico City when I was working for a big, nameless, faceless American company in the mid-90s. I've gone back many, many times since then because I've owned a business importing arts and crafts from Mexico since 1999. I've taken so many trips down there and I've explored that country so much that it's really only logical that I start this podcast to share with people the strange and amazing things I've discovered right next door. And since I'm broadcasting from sunny San Diego, California... I can tip my hat to former Alaska governor and beauty queen Sarah Palin and say I can almost see Mexico from outside my kitchen window. Today we're going to talk about Milagros. They've played an important part in my life, so I figured it would be appropriate for me to talk about them here on my first show. But before I talk about these fascinating pieces of religious folk art, I want to talk a little bit about the podcast. I aim to provide as much information as close to the source as possible. In my early 20s, I was a professional researcher, and that was before the internet was around, at least the internet that we know today. And unlike many of the podcasts you see out there that move things around, like peas on a dinner plate with your butter knife... I'm not going to be repeating what I've heard before, and I will strive to provide original content, interesting interviews, and real research that goes beyond just a Google search or a brief little Wikipedia lookup. In this podcast, I will provide information, not confirmation. I will present the facts, or I'll give you what I've uncovered so that you can formulate your own opinions or Better yet, you can add to the research and investigate the topics yourself. I want to have guests on to talk to me about their areas of expertise, too. I also want to be incredibly responsive to my audience. So that's why I set up a website corresponding to this podcast, MexicoUnexplained.com. Do you have something interesting about Mexico that you want for me to explore? Let me know. You can go to the site and contact me, send me messages directly. You can see photos about what I'm talking about on here. And you can express your opinion about the show, too. There's a little comment section. You can also pull up show summaries. I don't call them show notes. In case you wanted to read what you heard about and that I was talking about on the air. I'll try to list as many references as I can and have like a little bibliography at the end of each podcast and I will be following the donations based model here so if you feel like you want to contribute there's a donation button at the site and any little bit you can help out with I would really appreciate it. even two bucks if you send me in the mail the old-fashioned way it can really help me out and um, it could really seriously aid in our efforts here so On to the content of the show. What are Milagros? Basically, you might have seen them before. They are small metal charms about the size of a penny or a dime. They're usually silver colored or golden. And the silver ones are made out of what they call pot metal. Whatever they can throw into the crucible to melt to make these charms. The golden ones are brass. You can buy silver ones and real gold, too. Of course, they're more expensive, and they're harder to come by. 
But the most common ones are just little aluminum, steel, whatever the heck metal they can throw into the, the pot to make the charms. So what are they? They look like body parts, animals, houses, stars, suns, moons, a lot of different types make up the traditional milagro wet repertoire. And they are used traditionally as small offerings of thanks, but lately they've they've changed their use. Like so many other cultural things, they, they change with the times, they adapt to different needs and, and also different geographical locations. They're traditionally used in the old-fashioned way as small offerings of thanks, as I said, but a lot of people now are using them as good luck charms or they're bought in anticipation of doing good things. They're used as craft in craft decoration, jewelry, adornment for altars. There's a whole wide variety of, of ways that these are being used now. So where did these come from? In the Mediterranean world and the classical world of ancient Greece and Rome, people made offerings to the gods in the shapes of different things. Sometimes they were made out of clay. Mostly they were made out of clay. But um, the milagro of the ancient world, called a tamata in Greek, was once again a representation of a wish that was granted or prayer that was answered. So it's a little offering after the fact. And now the milagros, once the Roman Empire fell, the milagros were used by Christians. And then later, people in the Western and Eastern churches, Eastern Orthodox and then the Catholic Church, they were brought to the Hispanic New World with the conquistadors and the friars and everything that came with them. And they're still in use today in full force, mostly in central Mexico. That's where the homeland of the Milagros is now. But they've spread north. And like I said before, they've changed to accommodate culture. And so Milagros now have different meanings to different people. So when I had my retail store when I was selling the Milagros people asked me what did each Milagro mean and I thought it would be neat to have a little dictionary to explain them but it really wouldn't serve any use because the Milagros are in different shapes as you can see on the website if you go there they're in different shapes and those shapes are self-explanatory so for example if you have a sick cow, you would use a cow milagro. If you have a broken arm, or if you wanted your arm to heal properly, you use an arm milagro. If you just bought a house, you would use a house milagro. Overall health would be a body milagro, and so on. Generic milagros are praying people. Praying people are probably the most common milagros. So what happens if you if your arm was healed and you made a promise to God or to a saint, you would take one of these little metal pieces, these little metal charms, and go to a shrine and leave it there and say a prayer of thanks. But um, like I said, nowadays they are used in anticipation of a miracle. People will buy them before a miracle or something good happens in the hopes that the Milagro will do work for them. And some people now carry them in their purses or in their wallets or with them or on jewelry as good luck charms like you would use a rabbit's foot for. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? If you're a traditionalist, it might not be so good, but it's part of culture. These things will change in their meaning over time and in different areas. So, what is my connection to these little charms? As I briefly mentioned, I did have a retail store where I sold these over the counter, and I still sell these online. When I first opened my store, I really didn't have much interest in Milagros. In fact, I really didn't even know what they were. I'd seen them on ornamental crosses, 
and I've seen them here and there throughout the little shops in Mexico and sold out in front of the churches, but I didn't really know that there was any sort of customer demand for this. That's when my education in Malacaros began with the customers. They would come in and they would request specific Malagros for specific ailments and conditions. And I thought, well, you know, as a business owner, you have to listen to customer demand. So I became really curious and I found a couple of sources for Malagros down in Mexico. And then a few in Peru and one in Brazil also. And I started to import them. I had quite a bit of variety. And I found the most interesting part of this whole experience was when people would buy them from me and then they would come back later. Maybe it was a month, maybe it was a week, maybe it was a day later, and they told me how these had worked. There was one woman I remember who was looking for a job, and she asked me what Milagro I would recommend for her for looking for a job, and I said, well, the corn one. Because the little ear of corn symbolizes abundance. In Mexico, corn is a staple food. So that's always been traditional as a milagro for abundance, for wealth. Because we're not supposed to pray for money. We're supposed to pray for abundance. There's also another milagro for shaking hands. And that's good for negotiation, for friendship, for good feelings between people and so on. So I I sold her one of the ears of corn, and I also sold her one of the shaking hands, Milagro. When she left my store, her phone rang, and I didn't think much of that until she came back about two weeks later and told me that not only had she thought that the Milagros worked, that they worked as she was leaving my store, because her phone rang with a job offer. So that was kind of interesting. And there was a lot of a lot of other stories I heard mostly to do with health, which I thought was interesting. There is a mind and body connection and perhaps the Milagros are a bridge between the mind and the body. Somehow you focus your intention on these little things. And I guess some people think if you believe hard enough, miracles really can happen. I always told people that there was no guarantee with these things and that there was always a faith element. And so I guess 95 cents in the little basket on my counter was probably better than a lottery ticket. An interesting part of my whole personal Milagro story is when an article was written about the whole Milagro phenomena back in 2004, This college boy named Dan, he was an intern at the local paper. He was looking for the post office and stopped into my store and thought, wow, this is cool, all these colorful things, you know, all of the folk art. And he knew that a lot of things that I was carrying had a lot of meaning. And so we started talking about the Milagros. And his eyes lit up like a young cub reporter on to you know, this hot story or something. And he asked me if I would like to be interviewed for a story on the Milagros because he thought it was fascinating. Of course, I wasn't going to turn down any sort of publicity, so I said yes. And then he wrote a beautiful article in the local paper. It was picked up by The Sun, the national tabloid, and soon the the story of the Milagros was in every supermarket checkout stand that you can think of in North America. And that caused a lot of people to be coming into my store. And it was interesting that a lot of people came to me as somewhat of a last resort. I had people walking in my stores with oxygen tanks and on crutches even. And They were saying, I've tried everything. I heard about this. This might work. I'm open to anything. I will make it work. I will do whatever it takes. So it was was quite a trip to, to see all of these people come in and hear everything. And I became quite a little practitioner for this sort of thing. 
And I was getting letters from all over the place of people who felt that these little charms could give their lives meaning or could help them. And I have kept every single one of these letters. I showed this folder that I had these letters in to one of my customers, an older Hispanic nana. I guess that's a redundancy. She looked at them and her eyes kind of glossed and teared over and she said, these letters are your real treasure. And I would like to read some of these letters to give you some sort of indication as to what exactly we're dealing with here. So this one is dated May 10th, 2010. And it says, Dear Milagro Mercado, because that's what I was calling a portion of my website at the time. My 16-year-old son, Jamie, has been ill for over a year with an undiagnosed digestive disorder. Among other things, it includes constant nausea and stomach pain. We have been to the doctor with very little relief. We have been to acupuncturists, allergists, and nutritionists as well. Still no relief. I'm a big believer in hope and in miracles. So why not a Milagro? I have actually purchased several Milagros for my friends, but I thought I would go through you and use your expertise in selection and give it a try. Thank you for your help and consideration. Sincerely, Margaret. The next one um, is a little bit more serious, and it was written by Anna. It says, Hola! Nice exclamation point there. Upbeat. I saw your website about Milagros and wanted to see if you could pick out an appropriate Milagro for me. I've been struggling with sadness and depression for most of my life, and I tried to kill myself when I was 20. But I lived through it and went on to finish college studying music and psychology. I compose music for solo piano, and you can go to my websites here to hear my music. And she wrote them down. One of them was a MySpace page, so... That was quite some time ago. I am 38 years old now and still trying to figure out what to do with my life. I'm studying Spanish now and have a test tomorrow. And even though it's a beginner's class, it's very difficult for me to learn. But I'm not giving up. I think my biggest strengths are courage, strength, compassion, and my ability to express myself through music. Last year, my father murdered my stepmother and then killed himself and I'm still struggling with trying to accept it. I sometimes feel really sad and feel like giving up, but I know I have to keep moving forward. I hope you can find a Milagro that will help me. Blessings. Okay, I'll go through a few more. Okay, hello. My dog has a problem with her legs. She's had it since she was a puppy. I wanted to get a Milagro for her to wear on her collar because her legs are getting worse. I think maybe an image of a leg. It would have to have a hole so I can put it on her collar. Thank you so much, Kathy. Okay, I'll do two more. Dear friends, thank you so much for keeping the Milagro Marketplace open. I love all the beautiful pieces that you have, particularly the Milagros. During the past years, I bought a lot of them and they make a big change in my life. At least until December of 2009. Since that day, my life seems to be so different, but in a sad way. I divorced my husband in March of 2010, and my nana died that month as well. In April, I sold my house and lost my job as an on-air radio talent. Now, after living with friends, I'm finally renting a loft. Since my nana is no longer with me, I got my mom the papers to come to this country as a legal resident to live with me but I'm not sure if this decision will be the best for us. I kept all the other jobs I had besides the radio one, so I have no debts, but I miss that job a lot. I met a wonderful guy, very blonde and handsome, but he's from another culture, another religion, and he's younger than me. So even if he loves me, his family will never be happy if he makes a family with me. My whole situation makes me so depressed. Do you think I should still have hope? Could you please send me a little milagro that can make me believe again? Thank you so much. Maria. Okay. 
And the last one that I want to read is, Hello. I gave a milagro of a heart to the woman I love five years ago. Recently, she misplaced it, or one of our dogs ate it, and it is missing. She is devastated. It was a small tin and copper one. She wore it around her neck permanently. It may have come off when changing clothes. I'm sending $5 and hope you can send me a similar milagro to the one we lost. It is a symbol of our love, and I am desperate to replace it. Thank you for your help, Mark. So as you can see, these little charms invoke powerful feelings, powerful emotions, and powerful expectations in the people who believe in them. They are very, very Mexican, and they are very prevalent, especially in the central part of the country. And a lot of people put a lot of faith into these little guys. So what do you think of these milagros? Are they an important bridge between the mind and the body? Are they part of a folkloric tradition that really doesn't have any sort of impact on our modern lives? Or are they something that's very old and very important? Well, that's about all we have time for today. I hope you enjoyed exploring this miracle of Mexico the topic of Mexican Milagro charms, please go to our website www.mexicounexplained.com Thank you very much and we will see you next time.